Sexuality is a key component of our identity. In this video, I want to offer a very simple way of conceptualizing sexuality that combines the Kinsey scale with the spectrum of sexual desire. I think you'll find it relatable, and I think it'll be interesting to reflect on where you'd place yourself on this graph. Most people are aware of the Kinsey scale. It's a spectrum of sexuality. Sexologist Alfred Kinsey and a couple of colleagues conducted surveys on thousands of people, asking them about their sexual experiences and attractions. They found that hetero, homo, and bisexuality weren't quite the distinct categories that they were made out to be. There are degrees of sexuality in between hetero and bi, and in between bi and homosexual. Kinsey published the results of his research in two seminal books, Sexual Behavior of the Human Male in 1948 and Sexual Behavior of the Human Female in 1953. Kinsey was also a zoologist, and the titles of these books just strike me as something a zoologist would come up with. Not men and women, but human male and human female. These books are collectively known as the Kinsey Reports, and they had a huge influence on the public perception of sexuality. On the Kinsey scale, zero represents exclusively heterosexual with no homosexual experiences or desires. Six represents exclusively homosexual with no heterosexual experiences or desires. One through five represent the smooth continuum between those ends, with three, of course, representing bisexuality. In Kinsey's research, there were plenty of people represented on each degree of the spectrum. Now, we can create a visual here with an x-y graph, where the Kinsey scale is the x-axis, and the y-axis is the spectrum of libido, or sexual desire, ranging from asexual to hypersexual. Asexual people have little to no desire for sex or sexual attraction to others. They can still experience a romantic orientation, but sex doesn't excite them. It's not that they fear it, it's just a genuine disinterest. I don't ever have any desire to participate in any sexual activity. I can have romantic attraction for people, but I don't want to have sex with them. Hypersexual people are obsessed with sex. Their sex appetite is almost insatiable. How many people have you with? I lost count. <laughs> I lost track. Over 150. It's like three to five dicks a month, times 12 months, times 10, 20 years. <laughs> well, it's, I'd say 2,000, I have no idea. 1,500? That's a lot of math, though. This isn't necessarily a problem unless it becomes an addiction. And hypersexuality can certainly have all the hallmark features of addiction. A preoccupation with thinking and fantasizing about sex. Intense cravings for it and it can become compulsory, meaning you feel like you can't go without it and you can't control it. As with any addiction, hypersexuality can lead to negative consequences in the person's health, relationships, and functionality. But again, extreme sexual desire is not necessarily a problem. People can learn to harness it and channel it appropriately. Hypersexuality is a disorder listed in the DSM, but as with most if not all psychological disorders, the line between who has it and who doesn't is drawn arbitrarily. So if we intersect these spectrums. We have a nice graph that begins to portray two important components of your sexuality how bad you want it, and with whom you want to have it. There are people who are a three, four, five, or six on the Kinsey scale who are above or below average in sexual desire, and there are people who are a three, two, one, or zero on the Kinsey scale with above or below average levels of sexual desire. The question of fluidity versus fixedness is also interesting to consider. Wherever you plot yourself on this graph is subject to change, especially as it relates to your level of sexual desire. Sexual orientation can be relatively fluid as well, particularly for twos, threes, and fours on the Kinsey scale, but sexual drive can change significantly throughout life. 
and there are many factors that influence it. Including health, emotional states, self-esteem, and a sexual partner that sparks and fuels your desire. Age is also a factor, of course, but sex drive doesn't necessarily decline with age. And sexual activity is not only a sign of vitality, but it can be a cause of vitality. So there's much more to explore here, which we'll do in future videos. I think it can be helpful to know approximately where you fit into this graph. And knowing this may be helpful in discerning who would be a compatible mate for you. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you found it interesting, I recommend watching our video on the triangular theory of love, which examines the basic ingredients of relationships and the types of relationships we experience. All right, much love. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe.